So I've been watching SV Seekers channel for years. I'm not sure if you're familiar, but in terms of epic projects, SV Seeker sets the bar. Doug is making an ocean going vessel in his front yard. He's been doing it for years, complete with jet boat and remote vehicles and plans to sail the world when he's done. Pretty unbelievable. So I thought it's high time I sent him something. I reached out to him and he said, yeah, sure, I'll take a mug. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll make him a few mugs and send it to him and I hope he enjoys. So this project started on the CNC and the laser to make the stamps that I'm going to use. And now I'm using the pottery wheel to make a few bodies. And you'll see me make handles and uh, use the stamps and put the whole thing together. And I'll glaze them and I'll come back to you and we'll take a look.
Okay, so here are the first attempts. I'll show you what we got. Honestly, not happy with how this came out. I really like this logo, but it washed out more than I was happy with. I thought I was going to find this buckle to be a little too thick too. It does add some weight to the piece. When we do it again, I'd like to make this thinner. And I'm not 100% on the blue on the rim, honestly. Here's the other one. Same problem. The stamp is getting deep enough, but the glaze is obscuring it, and I think that this is a an, an iron-based Temaku glaze that I rubbed in, and I just don't think it's got enough power to come out strong. So we'll do those again. These, though, turned out really good. This is the press mold pattern that we use the CNC to make. I, I, it, the, the color depends on how thick it goes on, so I see right away that they're similar, but they're different. A little thicker turns a little more blue. But I think these look good. Got a little stamp. Yeah, I'm happy with those. I thought I had seen, you can tell here, this is not fully stuck on to the cup like I'd want. I'm going to have to watch that and make sure that's it's fine. But if it got hit right there, yeah, it might chip. We don't want that. Okay, so here's our second try. This stamp turned out way better than the first try. Uh, this time I used a mason stain, like a 10% mason stain by dry weight into a, a clear glaze. Made sure it didn't get rubbed out. And, and I think what mattered most was putting uh, the cover glaze is not this white. It's a celadon, so it's kind of clear. It shows through. Easy when it builds up it does turn a little brown but I think the effect is nice I like that it turned out really good I only made one of those but oof but I made a few more of these I think they turned out really good they're all stuck down a little bit more blue I must you know, obviously put a, a thicker coat on when I did these There you go. I'm happy with that. I did want to point out something that I learned on this project, or I think I'd learned before and I relearned, but my hope on this stamp was that I could apply it directly to the mug once it was leather hard or a little softer than leather hard um, and get the stamp right into the mug. No, no belt buckle but it is really really hard to get a consistent stamp that long rolling around the front of this thing and to have it all come out perfect and you only get one shot if you miss stamp or the a little detail gets doesn't get picked up you cannot go back and do it a second time 
because it's going to be an obvious double stamp that you you have to scrap the piece. So it makes a lot more sense on a on an intricate stamp like this to make some sort of a, an attachment and you can make several and if they don't work you can make more until you get it stamped right and then you apply that to your your piece. So that's my thoughts on big stamps. So in total these are all keepers and I think I'm going to send Doug these two. So that'll do it. We'll get those in the mail. Hope he likes them. It's pretty cool.